child marriage much as i wish that i had not to write this chapter i know that i shall have to swallow many such bitter drafts in the course of this narrative and i cannot do otherwise if i claim to be a worshipper of truth it is my painful duty to have to record here my marriage at the age of 13 as i see the youngsters of the same age about me who are under my care and think of my own marriage i am inclined to pity myself and to congratulate them on having escaped my lot i can see no moral argument in support of such a preposterously early marriage let the reader make no mistake i was married not betrothed for in katiwa there are two distinct rights betrothal and marriage betrothal is a preliminary promise on the part of the parents of the boy and the girl to join them in marriage and it is not inviolable the death of the boy entails no widowhood on the girl it is an agreement purely between the parents and the children have no concern with it often they are not even informed of it it appears that i was betrothed thrice though without my knowledge i was told that two girls chosen for me had died in turn and therefore i infer that i was betrothed three times i have a faint recollection however that the third betrothal took place in my 7th year but i do not recollect having been informed about it in the present chapter i am talking about my marriage of which i have the clearest recollection it will be remembered that we were three brothers the first was already married the elders decided to marry my second brother who was 2 or 3 years my senior a cousin possibly a year older and me all at the same time in doing so there was no thought of our welfare much less our wishes it was purely a question of their own convenience and economy marriage among hindus is no simple matter the parents of the bride and the bridegroom often bring themselves to ruin over it they waste their substance they waste their time months are taken up over the preparations in making clothes and ornaments and in preparing budgets for dinners each tries to outdo the other in the number and variety of courses to be prepared women whether they have a voice or no sing themselves hoarse even get ill and disturb the peace of their neighbors these in their turn quietly put up with all the turmoil and bustle all the dirt and filth representing the remains of the feasts because they know that a time will come when they also will be behaving in the same manner it would be better thought my elders to have all this bother over at one and the same time less expense and greater ekla for money could be freely spent if it had only to be spent once instead of thrice my father and my uncle were both old and we were the last children they had to marry it is likely that they wanted to have the last best time of their lives in view of all these considerations a triple wedding was decided upon and as i have said before months were taken up in preparation for it it was only through these preparations that we got warning of the coming event i do not think it meant to me anything more than the prospect of good clothes to wear drum beating marriage processions rich dinners and a strange girl to play with the carnal desire came later i proposed to draw a curtain over my shame except for a few details worth recording to these i shall come later but even they have little to do with the central idea i have kept before me in writing this story so my brother and i were both taken to porbandar from rajkot There are some amusing details of the preliminaries to the final drama e.g. smearing our bodies all over with turmeric paste but I must admit them my father was a diwan but nevertheless a servant and all the more so because he was in favor with the thakur saab the latter would not let him go until the last moment and when he did so he ordered for my father special stage coaches reducing the journey by 2 days 
but the fates had willed otherwise. Porbandar is 120 miles from Rajkot, a cart journey of five days. My father did the distance in three, but the coach toppled over in the third stage, and he sustained severe injuries. He arrived bandaged all over. Both his and our interest in the coming event was half destroyed. But the ceremony had to be gone through. For how could the marriage dates be changed? However, I forgot my grief over my father's injuries in the childish amusement of the wedding. I was devoted to my parents. But no less was I devoted to the passions that flesh is heir to. I had yet to learn that all happiness and pleasure should be sacrificed in devoted service to my parents. And yet, as though by way of punishment for my desire for pleasures, an incident happened, which has ever since rankled in my mind and which I will relate later. Nishkulanon sings, Renunciation of Objects, without the renunciation of desires, is short-lived, however hard you may try. Whenever I sing this song or hear it sung, this bitter untoward incident rushes to my memory and fills me with shame. My father put on a brave face in spite of his injuries and took full part in the wedding. As I think of it, I can even today call before my mind eye the places where he sat as he went through the different details of the ceremony. Little did I dream then that one day I should severely criticize my father for having married me as a child, everything on that day seemed to me right and proper and pleasing. There was also my own eagerness to get married, and as everything that my father did then struck me as beyond reproach. The recollection of those things is fresh in my memory. I can picture to myself, even today, how we sat on our wedding days, how we performed the Saptapadi. Saptapadi are seven steps the Hindu bride and groom walk together, making at the same time promises of mutual fidelity and devotion, after which the marriage becomes irrevocable. How we, the newly wedded husband and wife, put the sweet kansar. Kansar is a preparation of wheat which the pair partake of together after the completion of the ceremony, into each other mouth and how we began to live together. And oh, that first night, two innocent children all unwittingly hurled themselves into the ocean of life. My brother-wife had thoroughly coached me about my behavior on the first night. I do not know who had coached my wife. I have never asked her about it, nor am I inclined to do so now. The reader may be sure that we were too nervous to face each other. We were certainly too shy. How was I to talk to her? And what was I to say? The coaching could not carry me far. But no coaching is really necessary in such matters. The impressions of the former birth are potent enough to make all coaching superfluous. We gradually began to know each other and to speak freely together. We were the same age. But I took no time in assuming the authority of a husband.